Hi there, my name is Jay with CompuMatter and in this video I'm going to teach you how tail scale works. Here are the use cases. If you're a, a developer like myself, you're working on your local web development machine, you go off somewhere else, some other part of the country, across town, home, whatever, you want to access that web development machine, but it's not connected via a static IP. It isn't, uh, you don't want to set up port forwarding and all these special use cases or dynamic DNS or what have you to get to that web development machine. Another use case is you, you've, you've got a virtual server running in your, in your uh, work, develop, work environment and you want a developer from overseas or somewhere else to be able to access that virtual machine. But uh, same thing, you don't have a static IP, you, you don't want to have to jump through all those hoops of dynamic DNS or port forwarding on the router. Um, this is an incredible solution and this is how it works. Uh, first I'm going to open up my server environment. This is my web development machine that I create whatever it is I create in this world, at least one of them. And um, currently there's no way in. It's only on the local LAN. I'll give you a, an IF config environment so you can see. I've got a 192 here, I've got a 192 there, and a local. There's no statics coming in. Uh, I'm going to install the program Tailscale. This is where it starts. They've got a simple, and I'm using this demonstration on a Linux environment. If it's on a Windows environment, you can download their, uh, their software from their website. Done. Now, this is the command that ties it together. The program's in there. Like that. Okay, so that was successful. The next thing we need to do is go to this website. Now, if you've already got an account at Tailscale, um, it'll just ask you for your credentials. If you don't, then you'll need to sign up. So let's go ahead and enter that. Go to their website. I will sign in. You might sign up. Okay, authorization successful. And just so you know, this happened automatically on my web development machine. That success was put there dynamically after I visited that page. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at Tailscale for just a second. Now that you've created an account, we can log in and it shows you a list of your machines. Now, as you can see, I'm getting some use out of Tailscale. The one I just created was right here, Jay's Web Dev. It's currently connected, so that, that it's a VPN type connection and it is alive and working on the other end. Now, let's go to a Windows computer. We're gonna move this aside for just a moment. In fact, I'll put that right here. We'll take a Windows VM. Okay, so now we have a Windows 10 virtual machine in front of us uh, that has never seen uh, tail scale or any way to SSH into the other box. We'll start by opening up PuTTY. And we're gonna type in the IP address assigned to us by tail scale. Now we can get that by coming over to the, the machine that we're targeting and doing an IF config, and one of the things we're going to see right here is the tail scale IP address. Okay? We'll go ahead and plug that in right here. And I will save this as Jay's Web Dev. All right. We'll go ahead and open that. Oh, I forgot. In my case, I changed my port from the stock. 22 to 925. That's something you can do on your own dev machine if you choose, but the default 22 is fine. So you're going to notice that it won't connect. And that's an important lesson. I want you to know how these dots connect. Um, because Tailscale is a VPN type machine, it needs to be running on the machine that you're connecting from. So if you're sending this to a developer somewhere, 
tell them to go download a copy of Tailscale on their computer before they try to access yours. So we'll go to, uh, we'll just type in Tailscale download, search for that. And we see this comes up. It automatically identifies we're on a Windows machine. We'll go ahead and choose that download. This is exactly what you or your developer will be experiencing on the other side of the equation. All right, we're getting a little notice. It says tail scale authentication need, needs to be done. So we'll close the install and we'll respond to that. Now I can close that. You'll notice these, this little grid down here of gray squares. That's the tail scale icon. And the fact that they're all gray is the indicator that you're not logged in. So let's click on that takes us to the website. They will enter in with their credentials for Tailscale or if you are accessing it remotely, you just need to put this on the computer you're trying to get in from, so it'll be your own credentials. All right, log in there. All right, that's successful. You'll notice at the bottom, the icons have turned to a black and gray. That's their indicator. There's no, there's no reasoning to that pattern down there. It just indicates that you are logged in. So now we're gonna open up Putty again. I'm gonna click on this uh, one that I saved earlier. So nothing is different. Put in the proper port for my SSH environment and open. And you see immediately, it, it gave me access to that IP address. I enter in my login information and we're there. This is that development machine. You can see uh, here we've got the local IP address of that machine. I've got two NICs on that machine, so that's why you're seeing that. And you can see the tail scale uh, IP over here, which coincides. You can see the left side machine here. It's identical. Now, when you already have an account, it logs in, everything works fine. The only uh, other consideration that you need to make here is you need to share. If you want another developer to access your machine, you need to uh, authorize that to happen. And, uh, and the way that you'll do that is this Jay's Web Dev as a for instance. Um, I can click on these three dots and choose share this machine. You give the, uh, I guess the, we'll call it um, BJ. He's a developer that I'm working with right now. I can create a link. It gives me that. Uh, they click copy, done. And then from their world, they can paste that link, go there. And I, I, can't, ex I can't send an, invoice to my, uh, an invite to myself, so that won't work. But they will simply get taken through that small process of signing up for an account if they don't have one and downloading the software for their local machine the same way I just showed you. So that's it. I hope that has helped you in the same way that it's helped me um, and, uh, and grease the wheel for you getting involved with it. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.